So there were lots of writing study groups, little monasteries of places of study and of writing ability. So it's not impossible for people to learn to write and be literally, literally have that ability. And this is amongst ordinary people of the time. So that deals with Hamza when he attacks the Gospels. Um, dealing with Hashim, Hashim's been going around talking about um, uh, the curse that Jesus is cursed. And the reason is, if, if you read the book of Galatians, it says, Paul, an apostle, not of men, neither by man, but by Jesus Christ and God the Father whom reigns. It says, verse 6, I marvel that you are so soon removed from him that called you unto the grace of Christ unto another gospel, which is not another, but there be some that trouble you and will pervert the gospel of Christ. But though we are an angel from heaven, preach any other gospel unto you than that which we have preached unto you, let him be accursed. And we said before, I'll say I now again, if any man preach any other gospel unto you than that which you receive, let him be accursed. So Paul is saying here there is a gospel, and the gospel is that Jesus died and rose again. That is the gospel. Paul says here in chapter 3 of Galatians, O oh, foolish Galatians who have bewitched you, that you should not obey the truth before whose eyes Jesus Christ has been openly set forth, crucified among you. This only would I learn of you, receive ye the spirit of the works of the law, or by the hearing of faith. Are you so foolish, having begun in the spirit, are you now made perfect in the flesh? After you have suffered so many things in the flesh, in vain, if it be yet in vain. He therefore that ministereth to you the Spirit and worketh miracles among you, doeth it by the works of the law or by the hearing of faith. Even as Abraham believed God and it was accounted to him for righteousness, know you therefore that they who are of faith, the same are the sons of Abraham. And the scripture foreseeing that God would justify the Gentiles through faith, preached before the gospel unto Abraham saying, in thee all the nations be blessed. So they who are faith are blessed with the faithful Abraham. For as many as are of the works of the law are under the curse of it. Is written, Cursed is anyone that kin with, continueth not in all things which are written in the book of the law to do them. But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God. It is evident for the just shall live by faith. And the law is not of faith but the man that doeth them shall live in them. Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law by a made, made a curse for us. It is written, Cursed is everyone that hangeth on a tree. That is a blessing Abraham might come on the Gentiles through Jesus Christ that we might receive the promise of the Spirit. So, when Hashim goes around saying, Christ is cursed, how can Christ be cursed? He doesn't understand Christian theology. The law was given to, to judge. It, it was given to show us our sin. Paul says in this book, the law is a schoolmaster to bring us to Christ. Nobody could fulfill the law. Nobody could obey the law. Okay? Perfectly. So we all, as it says in Romans chapter 3, all of us fall short of the glory of God. We're all sinners. But before the law came, Abraham was given a promise and he obeyed that promise by faith. And that promise was that he would have a seed of, like, of many nations, uh, like the stars in the, in the sky. That Abraham would have that many people in his uh, kingdom and it is through faith. So before the law, it was faith. And so salvation comes by faith. Now when Christ came... He obeyed all the law and when he died on the cross, he died taking the punishment for our sin. And when he rose again, we are not saved by works, we're saved by faith like Abraham was, but faith in the, in the Messiah, in Jesus Christ our Lord. 
And that is the gospel. That is Jesus Christ is our salvation. He is all that we need. He is the one that God has given, God the Father has given, that we may be saved. Now, I want to say this, that, that, that as Muslims, you would not like it if we took a Quranic verse and took it out of context. You would not like it if we studied, say, a topic like uh, jihadism and we took a, a verse out of context. You'd want us to look at all the verses. So when Hashim and Hamza and all these Muslim apologists attack the Bible, they're just doing, they're just taking isolated text. It might be 10 or 20, but they're just taking the text that they want as a proof text for what they want to pump out, what they want to teach. But if you as Muslims and Christians take all the text, all the text where he teaches about Jesus, it says he's a man, but it also says he's a prophet, it also says he's the son of God, it also says that he's God in the flesh. You take all the text, okay? It's the same when you're talking about Jesus' death and what it means. You take all the text, not just the book of Galatians, you've got to take Romans and Hebrews, you've got to take the Old Testament, the book of Leviticus, etc. And if you don't take all these texts, you're going to get a wrong understanding of why Christ died, a wrong understanding of who Jesus is. You're going to be blinded by the sophistry of these Muslim apologists who are just picking out bits of information that they want to blind you with. And a lot of these people who have left uh, the EDL, for example, and become Muslims, the reason why you become Muslims is because you weren't taught Christianity. You, 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 some of you went to Sunday school, but you weren't taught Christianity properly. You, didn't, you weren't taught how to understand Christianity. You didn't receive Christianity. You didn't receive it into your heart. Because if you did, you would know that flesh gives birth to flesh and spirit gives birth to spirit. That until you're born again, you cannot see the kingdom of God. Until you have your spiritual eyes open, until you're born again, You'll never ever understand these things. You can't get into the kingdom by pure intellect, by pure argument. You've got to be a spiritual man where you receive spiritual things from God. And that where you, are, where you allow God to teach you by the Holy Spirit. Jesus says in John chapter 3, you must be born again. And until you understand that Christ has died as your saviour and given his life for you, you'll never understand the gospel. When John the Baptist saw Jesus, he said, Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Behold the Lamb of God. Jesus is the Lamb, the sacrifice for you to die on that cross. And you'll never understand the gospel until you understand that Christ died and gave his life for you. And so that is the message. It's not a law thing. One Muslim, young Muslim said to me, But Islam gives you specifics on everything. Christianity gives you life. It gives you real life with the living God. It gives you real life, spiritual life, because it's in connection with God through Jesus Christ. So we finished the uh, polemics. and So this was just a few things that I wanted to bring up with you, Hamza, but you never gave me the chance. You made an excuse with... Um, you made an excuse with um, you. You made an excuse uh, after the Bob the Builder thing. I I walk in past you, and you said debate. I said yeah. Let me go and get suku. You said oh no, not if you bring in suku. So I give you an opportunity to debate. You didn't want to debate, and so. You missed an opportunity. You had two topics to, topics to make. Is the Quran or the Bible the word of God? Or did Jesus die and rise again? You could have had the Matthew topic if you really wanted to. But you had some topics to pick away at, to, to, to get down to. But you didn't take the opportunity. And I, I, I'm just giving you a few things that I studied about the Quran, about the book of Acts. These are the things that I prepared myself I'd already got stuff prepared about the Quran and the resurrection. This was extra material that I studied and worked on for you, bro.
but you didn't take that opportunity. And I'm not, to be honest, Hamza, I'm not really interested, mate. I'm not really interested in chasing you around or chasing Hashim around or Mohammed Hijab. I'm not really interested. If people want to debate, I'll debate. If you don't want to debate, fine. I only followed Ham, uh, Hashim around last time because I wanted to give him a bit of taste of his own medicine. But to be honest, I'm not interested. I'm only interested in sharing the gospel. I'm only interested in sharing about Jesus Christ. That's all I'm interested in, really. Um, I'm not interested in uh, bolstering my ego and saying I'm a great debater and I can take on. I'm not interested in that. I'm only interested in sharing Jesus and, and lifting Jesus up. And the, per the point of this video is just to say, this is how I saw things at Hyde Park. This is the information that I, I prepared for Hamza. Questions on the Quran, information on the book of Acts, opportunity to debate on is the Quran the word of God and the Bible, and showing that the Quran has borrowed from other ancient sources and is plagiarized and a little bit on the resurrection which I prepared and other questions that might come up come up about the nature of the gospels and and stuff like that and I just wanted to show you the information that I prepared and also the ability to deal with young Hamza with this kind of material this kind of scholarship and the material to deal with uh, Paul Williams but not really give an opportunity to when I was in Hyde Park a few weeks ago, uh, Adan was challenging people to debate, and I debated him. But to be honest, I didn't have all my material. I like to have my notes with me. I, I'm not great at memory, but I like to read and study and listen and to lectures, and I make notes. And then I have my notes, and I've got my notes, and I'm fine when I've got my notes. So Adan, who's uh, a formidable uh debater and historian he he challenged me to a uh, he, no he, I got challenged into some kind of debate with him and I didn't have my notes I just had a piece of paper with a bit of information but I was willing to engage with him I was willing to debate with him and I didn't I didn't turn off from him I didn't ignore him I didn't I, I, I just I didn't have all my information, but I was willing to engage with him. And I just find that you as Dawa teams are not willing to engage with DCCI, with Roy Blood Ministries and with Bob on a fair level. And I think that's why you get this shouting match sometimes, because people are getting frustrated at, at the lack of dishonesty from the Dawa teams. And I think that's where the problems lie. And rather than you actually being honest and deal with things, you start calling uh, soccer films and, and causing drama, rather than getting to the nitty-gritty of actually saying, you know what, we'll have a fair debate. You know? That's my take on things. And that's my honest take. I just want to talk about for those who who um, who want to do a bit of study. I want to encourage you to get hold of this DVD set. It's a cracking DVD set. I really enjoyed it. It's called The Pursuit of Paul. It's published by Our Daily Bread. The Pursuit of Paul, Our Daily Bread. And the lecturer is Constantine R. Campbell, Professor of New Testament at Trinity Evangelical Divinity School. Constantine R. Campbell is called In Pursuit of Paul the Apostle, published by Our Daily Bread. Our Daily Bread. The Pursuit of Paul the Apostle. 
before I went to Hyde Park and listened to this, it is an absolute delight. An absolute delight. I really, really enjoyed this. I really, really did. So I'd encourage you to get hold of it and watch it, Muslim and Christian or atheist, and you'll really enjoy it. It's a fantastic set of two DVDs. I can't give it you away. I can't lend it because I'm going to watch it a few more times because I really enjoyed it. But I watched that before I went to Hyde Park and it was very informative. For example, when Paul got converted, he was on the way to Damascus. Now, the, the, the distance from Jerusalem to Damascus was not easy. It was quite a difficult travel. So when he was going persecuting Christians, he was determined. You know. And when you look at the seafaring life of Paul, because he, he goes on the ships and he follows Paul's shipping. Paul was an amazing uh, preacher. He travelled and travelled to get the gospel out. Wonderful documentary. Please get hold of it. The Pursuit of Paul by Constantine R. Campbell, Our Daily Bread. Wonderful, wonderful. Then, this is a very, 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 very good set of DVDs for apologists. It's called The Christ Files by John Dickinson. The Christ Files by John Dickinson and um, published by Zondaran. The Christ Files by jo John Dickinson published by Zondaran. This is an amazing two set of DDVs, about six hours of information looking at the early history of the church. Excellent DVD. Get yourself these. As Christians, watch them, you'll be blessed. So I'm going to read this and we're going to close in prayer. Thank you for listening. I hope this has been a blessing to everybody. It's come from a pure heart. And uh, I hope it's been edifying to everybody and an encouragement. God bless you. Love you all. Don't forget my website, jasonburnspreacher.com. And don't forget my Facebook and Twitter. I love you all. And God bless you. I'm going to read this and I hope it blesses you. About Jesus Christ. He was born in an obscure village. The child of a peasant woman. He grew up in still another village where he worked in a carpet and shop until he was 30. Then for three years he was itinerant preacher. He never wrote a book, he never held an office, he never had a family or owned a house. He didn't go to college, he never visited a big city, he never travelled to 200 miles from the place where he was born, he did none of the things one usually associate with greatness. He had no credentials but himself, he was only 33 when the tide of public opinion turned against him. His friends ran away. He was turned over to his enemies and went through the mockery of a trial. He was nailed to a cross between two thieves. While he was dying, his executioners gambled for his clothing, the only property he had on earth. When he was dead, he was laid in a borrowed grave through the, pit, through the pity of a friend. Nineteen centuries have come and gone, and today he is the central figure of the human race and the leader of mankind's progress. All the armies that ever marched, all the navies that ever sailed, all the parliaments that ever sat, all the kings that ever reigned, put together, have not affected the life of man on this earth as much as that. I say a prayer. Thank you for listening. God bless you. And may, may you all be blessed today. Muslim, Christian, atheist, whoever you are. I hope this video has been a blessing to you and an encouragement to you. God bless you. Father, I thank you for your love and for your mercy. I thank you for your grace. I thank you for your kindness and I thank you for your love. I pray that all those who hear these words from Hamza to Bob the Builder, to everybody. I pray that everybody would be blessed from everything that I've said. And I pray that everything that I've said would be edifying to all. And I ask this, Lord, in your name and for your glory. Amen. Thank you for all for listening and God bless you. 
uh, this video was done these videos were done from the bottom of my heart and I hope they're received uh, with the with the love that I that I send them out and so God bless you take care